Hi everyone, welcome to my crazy frugal life. Tonight is what's for dinner, but instead of doing it night by night, I'm doing it for an entire week. So tonight is leftover night, and it's Friday. Yay for Friday. These are garlic ranch potatoes. If I forget to put the recipe in the description, I will put it in there if you comment to remind me because these turned out really good. They are going to be added to the regular rotation. This is the creamy chicken and rice that I made the other night. This is the last night that will be ate and then it will be put into the freezer. That way if I don't feel good or something, you know, like a busy night, I can just pull it out, throw it in the oven, and it's a really quick, easy dinner because it's already cooked. All I have to do is heat it up. These are ribs. Some of them are barbecued and some just have a dry rub. And those are ribs, broccoli, and the potatoes that are down there. Now, the ribs, if there are any left, those will go into the freezer also. And that way, it could just be a quick, easy lunch. Pull it out, heat it up, and there, and cook a little broccoli or something on the side. And then there is a lunch. Tomorrow night, I'm not going to record, which is Saturday. We only go out to eat once a month. So, tomorrow night, we are going out to eat, and it will probably be Chinese. But, um... That's all for now, and I guess that I will see you guys Sunday. Hi everyone, welcome to my crazy frugal life. Today is Sunday, October 13th, and it is what's for dinner. We're having meatloaf, mashed potatoes, and black-eyed peas. Alright, for the black-eyed black peas, we open the can, pour it in the pot. water Put it in there take a handful these are onions for the meatloaf but I cut some up for the black eyed peas because I like black I like onions in my black eyed peas and then we just put it on the stove I made a big old batch of pancakes 50 pancakes today Next, we're going to do the mashed potatoes. I'm going to peel them, and whenever I come back, they will be peeled. All right. That is two pounds of potatoes that have been peeled and diced. They're about to go into that pot so they can boil to be made into mashed potatoes. All right. This meatloaf I got from one of my friends that I met on Facebook, actually. And I went to Florida for a vacation last year, and I actually got to meet her. She is a very awesome person. Her name is Janet. So this meatloaf calls for two pounds of hamburger, one large onion chopped, which I use some of that onion in the black eye piece, two cups of stuffing, two tablespoons of Worcestershire, two eggs, salt, pepper, and it calls for garlic salt, but I don't have any garlic salt. I just have garlic, so we're just going to have to compromise and use the garlic. All of it, all of the ingredients get put into that bowl, and then you mix it really, really well. And if you would like, once you go to make it into... Once you go make it into a loaf shape, she says you can surround the meatloaf with potato and onion wedges, small cut carrots, and celery. But I'm not going to do that since I'm doing mashed potatoes. So I'm just going to put all of this together and put it in. I have a bread a bread pan somewhere. <laughs> I'll find it. But um, I'm going to put it into there. And then once I do that, you have to cook it at 350 for about an hour. And this is what it looks like in the bread pan. Now it is time to put it in the oven for 300 at 350 degrees for about an hour all righty here we go meatloaf let's try it oh that's really good Yay! So one or two thumbs up? Three thumbs. Three! Awesome! Try not to get your face. <laughs> Yay! Even Jim said thumbs up. Yay! 
Thank you for the recipe, Janet. You're awesome. All right, everyone. We're going to see what it cost to fix our dinner. If, I do want to say that if it gets loud, I am sorry. Because I have my window open. Because of this guy. There's a squirrel out there. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> All right. For the meatloaf, I'm just going to show you with the ground beef how I figured everything out and then just give you the totals. For the ground beef, for five pounds, it was $11.88. So I took the $11.88 and divided it by five. It came out to be $2.37 a pound. I used two pounds of it, so that came out to be $4.75. The total for the meatloaf was $7.11. The black eyed peas were 62 cents, total 62 cents, because I added the onion up here in the meatloaf. The mashed potatoes, those came out to be 158. So the total for everything for our dinner was $9.31. We have enough for leftovers for lunch. So the boyfriend's taking it to work. I'm having it for lunch and the kiddo's taking it for lunch. So once you figure that out, the total was $9.31 divided by two. It came out to be $4.66 for last night, and it will be $4.66 for our lunch tomorrow. So that came out to be a really cheap meal, and we liked it so much that we just wanted it for lunch. That way it would be out of the fridge. Hi, everybody. It is Monday, October 14th, and it is what's for dinner. I have not cooked it yet. But this one already gets a thumbs up from everybody here. So that's why I'm not going to record while we're eating tonight. We are having hot dogs, fries, and broccoli. There's the broccoli. There's the french fries. Which we will only probably eat half of these. Hot dog buns. And the hot dog. All right, the cost for everything, the hot dogs were 82 cents, the hot dog buns were 87 cents, the mayonnaise was $3.12, there are 64 servings, so you divide that in a 312, it's 5 cents a serving times 8 because there's 8 hot dogs, which came out to 40 cents. The ketchup is a dollar divided by 63 because there's 63 servings in the ketchup, it's 2 cents a serving times eight because there's eight hot dogs. So that is 16 cent. Just get my board up. There's the chili. It is 48 cents a can divided in half because we never eat a whole can. We freeze the other half for hot dogs at another time. That's 24 cents. The fries are 258 divided by two because we'll only eat half the bag. So it's 129. The broccoli 598 divided by 17 is because there's 17 servings is 35 cents a serving times three servings so that's one 105 total for this meal is four dollars and 83 cents hi everyone today is tuesday october 15th we are having philly cheesesteak pasta i'm actually making that two separate ways i'm doing it in the pressure cooker and one on the regular stove brussels sprouts and garlic ranch potatoes. The one I'm doing on the stove, I'm going to attempt because it's just a pressure cooker recipe and I'm gonna attempt it on the stove for the ones that don't have a pressure cooker to see if it will come out okay. The garlic ranch potatoes is what I'm going to show you guys first. It calls for three pounds of baby potatoes, which I don't have. So I'm just gonna use regular potatoes and cut those up. It calls for two tablespoons of oil, garlic, ranch seasoning, salt and pepper, Two, tables, two tablespoons unsalted butter, two tablespoons of chopped parsley leaves for a garnish. You preheat your oven to 400 degrees, lightly oil, a baking sheet, or coat with nonstick spray. You place your potatoes in a single layer on the prepared baking sheet once they're cut. Add olive oil, garlic, and ranch seasoning. Season with salt and pepper to taste and gently toss to combine. Place in the oven and bake for 25 to 30 minutes. Oh, my camera's kind of foggy that's why I'm not really showing you this 
or until golden brown and crisp. Stir in butter until melted. That's about one minute and serve immediately garnished with parsley if desired. Now I have my oven preheating. I'm about to put everything put everything together. Once I get that together, I'll come back and show you what they look like in the pan before they go into the oven. All right. These are the potatoes right before they go into the oven. I had these, I think it was last week, and I had a whole bunch of them left over. What I did was I chopped them in the smaller pieces and I mixed them in with some eggs and ham for like a breakfast deal. It turned out really, really good using the leftovers that way too. All right. For the Instapot Philly cheesesteak, which I'm doing Instapot and one on the stove, hopefully the one on the stove turns out. It calls for one pound of ground beef, which if you see two, it's because I'm doubling the recipe because I'm doing one half here and the other half in the regular pot. Butter, onion that's diced, my garlic's over there from the potatoes, green peppers, mushrooms, ketchup, Worcestershire sauce, kosher salt is over there. Peppers over there, beef broth, just right there, the shell pasta, and cheese. Once I get the one into the pot, once I ground the ground, once I brown the ground beef, I will um, cut this back on and show you guys whenever I add it to the regular pot. All right, for the pressure cooker one, it says to add your butter. Let that melt and then ground your brown your ground beef eventually i will get that correct i'll be back once the ground beef has browned i got it right that time all right this is the one that's on the stove i have done everything browned it it didn't say to drain it, but it was kind of greasy, so I drained it. Green peppers, onions, garlic, ketchup, Worcestershire, beef broth, and the pasta. I'm just going to try to put the pasta down into the liquid. And then I'm just going to wait for it to come up to a boil. And I'm going to see if just the cooking time to like regular pasta, if that will make it done. We will find out. And right now I have the hamburger in this one. Browning up. The potatoes are getting there. The dinner will be ready in just a little bit. Alright, there's everything in there. So it says, let's cut this off says high pressure which high pressure is chicken so we're going to go to menu six yeah oh. might help if i found the lid and put the lid on there we go start over and then it says five minutes make sure that's up and start and it says once it's done do a quick release and then turn it off top with cheese and put the lid back on but don't seal allow it a minute or two for cheese to start to melt all right this is the one that was done on the stove it still has a minute and 48 these are the brussels sprouts i like they're for they were frozen i just cut them in half and i'll explain that in a minute and then that still has four minutes to go. The Brussels sprouts cut in half. 
it's one pound and then you cook them in the olive oil once they're cooked you add the kosher salt black pepper juice of half a lemon and one clove of garlic and then you cook it for one more minute my kiddo loves this one like I, I have to buy a bag the 24 ounce because if not then it's not enough for everybody in my house all right these are the potatoes once they're done that is the pressure cooker those are the brussels sprouts and this is the one that was done in the pot the cheese is still melting in this one but it's done other than the cheese being melted but once you stir it or put it on a plate it should melt this is my plate. I will not eat all of this. That's a lot of food. Okay, the one that's in the black bowl. This one? Mm-hmm. Came off of the stove. The one that's on your plate is the one that was in the pressure cooker. So you can try whichever one first. Okay. It's very cheesy. Yeah, I can see that. That's one on the stove. That one's really good. Really good? Yes. Awesome. I'll try that one. That one's the pressure cooker one. This one's really good as well, but I like this one better. Yeah, I know. All right, that's what I was thinking. I did everything exactly the same. This one turned out hardly any water. The only thing I did with this one that was different was I drained everything whenever I browned the hamburger, the onion, the green, and the green pepper. I drained it because of all the grease. This one I didn't. I followed the recipe, and it's very... So, from now on, I, will, I don't know if I make this again. I might try to drain it to see if it comes out different. I'm not sure if I will make it this way again. I might just do it on the stove top. Alrighty. The total for everything for the Philly cheesesteak pasta came out to be $19. It was really expensive. But I should get at least three meals, maybe more. But I'm just going to say three. So that came out to $6.33 per meal. The Brussels sprouts were $2.73. We won't have any of those left. So that was just an automatic $2.73. The potato, the garlic ranch potatoes came out to $2.61. That's what I have left. So that will be enough for, I'm just going to say three. It might be more because like I said earlier, I chop it up and put it in, in with eggs. And that was $0.87. Cents, so it's $9.93 per meal. That's to feed three people. Hi everyone. It is Wednesday, October 16th. Today for dinner, we are having leftover baked spaghetti, salad with dressing and garlic bread. This has been in the freezer. This is the garlic bread, the salad, and the dressing. All right, this is the third time that we've actually had this for dinner. And this will be the last time because there's only four pieces left. The noodles were 50 cents. I used two of those, so that was a dollar. The sauce was 88 cents each, and I used two, so that was 176. It was 294 for a bag of onions, so we're six in the bag, so 49 cents each. The green pepper was 89 cents. The cheese was $1.74. The ground beef was $11.88 divided by 5 because there's 5 pounds in it, which is $2.38 a pound. That total came out to be $8.26 and then divided by 3 because, like I said, this is the third time we've been eating it, $2.75. The salad is $0.92 cents divided by 2 because this will be the second dinner 
we're going to have it again this weekend. So it'll make two dinners 46 cents. Dressing was 92 cents. And there's 16 servings, which is six cents a serving times six. Because we like a lot of dressing on our salad. 36 cents. The garlic bread is 106. There won't be any left because usually with the garlic bread in the mornings, I have the leftover potatoes from the other night and I'll cook some eggs and mix all those together with some onion and I will put it on the garlic bread and that will be my breakfast. So the total for this meal comes out to be $4.63. Not bad for a night. Hey everyone, it is Thursday, October 17th, and it is chicken and dumplings for dinner. I have celery that I divided into four. These are going to be cut up and put in the freezer. This will be one meal, this will be for another, and this will be for another. We're not big celery eaters, so whenever I have a recipe that calls for it, I take what I need and then I put the rest into the freezer. The same with the carrots. These are going in to the chicken and dumplings, but I have these that I have blanched and they'll go into the freezer for whenever I need them next time. All right, we have the chicken. I'm gonna try to do this one-handed. Now I'm doing it in a slow cooker because my insomnia kicked in last night. So I'm living on like, I don't know, maybe two and a half hours sleep. So hopefully I can take a nap today. Alright, that's all the veggies. Wash my hands. I'm going to put some salt. just going to let it cook on high until I'm ready. Whenever it's time to eat it, I will take the chicken out and shred it and then I will put it into another pot to put the dumplings in, but we'll come you'll see that in a little bit. Yeah, already and that's the chicken pastries for the pastry. Use that. All right, guys. I didn't record this last night, so I'm doing it today, and it is chicken pastry and not chicken and dumplings, because I forgot that I had pastry in the freezer. So, the total came out to be ten ninety five divided by 3, because I'll get 3 meals. That equaled three sixty five, then divided by 3 people, came out to be $1.22 per serving. So, I think that's a really good deal. I hope you guys have a great weekend, and I will see you next week.